Welcome to the first installment of What Are You Thinking, Nathan? Today I'm going to field a question that is most likely a pretty common one that you've heard. Does God exist? <clears throat> and I th I'm going to go about it a different way than maybe you have heard before. And stepping back from the question, does God exist, I would ask you, do you exist? <clears throat> For something to exist, you know, it needs to have substance, and it needs to have presence, it needs to be somewhere. And um, if someone were to ask me if God exists, I would just say yes. Then they would say, well, you know, <clears throat> where does he exist? <clears throat> what is he made of? And where did he come from? And I would have to say, well, he's made of nothing and he came from nothing. And that, that doesn't make any sense, really. You know, in our, in our logic, in my logic, in anybody's logic, it doesn't make any sense for something to be made of nothing and to come from nothing. But then that's where I have to go back, step back from the question, does God exist, and ask you, do you exist? Here's what I mean when I say that. Where did you come from? Seriously. Where did you come from? What is the substance that you came from? You know, you could trace yourself back. To your, to your parents and, you know, to uh, sexual reproduction, but then taking it back yourselves all the way to the beginning, where would you say it began? You know, you, <clears throat> you might say, if you have a, a naturalistic viewpoint, that the Big Bang is where it began. So it's like, okay, um, I'm tracking. What was there before the Big Bang? Well, you say there was a, a pile of gases, maybe some some particles floating around, some single-celled organisms. Okay, that's, that's cool. Well, what came before that? I don't know. You know, I'm not a scientist. I'm not sure how far along the way you could take that. But I'm going to say that at some point, you get to the point where there is nothing before it. If you can tell me where the beginning is, then I'm going to ask you what the beginning of that beginning is. Well, my point is that you reach a point where nothing is the beginning. And I'm telling you, your existence doesn't make sense. The fact that you exist doesn't make sense. Going even further, the substance of you, your substance, doesn't make sense either. If you look at yourself, if you look at your skin cells, you know, I would, I look at my skin cell and I'd say, you know, why, uh, you know, what, what's holding me together? What am I made out of? And, you know, you, I look at my skin and I say, well, I'm made up of, of skin. You know, I mean, at least that's, that's what I see on the top. Um... So then one would say, well, what's the skin made up of? Well, it's made up of cells. And then it's like, okay, well, what are the cells made up of? Well, they're made up of molecules. And what are the molecules made out of? Well, those are made out of atoms. And then what are the atoms made out of? Well, those are made out of protons, electrons, and neutrons. And then what's on the inside of that? And then you might say quarks or something. Again, I'm, I'm also not a biologist, so I don't know how deep and how granular you could make that. But let's say you knew what was on the inside of an electron and then you knew what was on the inside of a quark, and that you knew what was on the inside of that. You get to a point, as you divide that down, as you break that down and make it more granular, that there is a, a substance, that there is a unit, that is made up of nothing. Let's act like the electron was the smallest unit ever. Well, we have to say, what's inside an electron? We have to ask. What's inside an electron to give it its properties? What gives any of my cells, their properties. And as you break it down to the smallest unit that you can, you find that not only did you come from nothing, you are made from nothing in a logical sense of the word. Basically, we are not infinitely reducible. We can't be. That doesn't make sense. And our existence is not infinitely traceable. That doesn't make sense either. Everything has to have a beginning, and everything must be made of a unit we're so complex. There has to be some system outside of us and beyond us that is keeping our cells together. There has to be some system outside and beyond us that put us into motion. Basically, I think if you have an issue with God's existence, you might take a step back and take arguments that are a little bit easier to handle because you're in deep water if you even try to explain your own existence. The only way that you know you exist is by self-realization. And there's nothing scientific about that. And in the same sense, people 
find God, you know? And God makes himself known. And it's not something that is proven. You know, I mean, people can prove for themselves. They can know God is real for themselves. But it's not something scientific. In the same way that your substance and your beginning is not scientific, neither is God's. And uh, God makes himself known really well. And I think part of the human condition even lends to that. You know, we see... We see in our own day-to-day -day lives that, uh, let's say maybe a girl gets into prostitution, or maybe a boy joins a gang. Conventional wisdom says, this happened because of a weak um, relationship with a father. And we can see that there are just so many questions that come when you don't have any leadership. And there's a brokenness that comes from <coughs> not having someone help you buy in life. There's some questions. You know, where is my worth? Who am I? Who should I be? And I think the human condition appeals to the fact that we are, as a human race, are in the same position. That we have this eternal or uh, spiritual daddy complex. You know, always looking for daddy. Trying to find daddy and then have daddy tell us why we're here and what we're supposed to do about it. The, the people who never get to the point where they realize that they, they need something outside of themselves, well, that's, that's a sad position to be in, I think. Because, well, maybe it's not. I take that back. If, if you don't feel like you need hope, that's a, that great, it's a great place to be. But I would say that for the rest of, the, of us humans, uh, all else failed. Seriously. You know, you know the saying... If all else fails, let's do this. Well, so far as the human condition is concerned, all else failed, you know? We, um, we have problems in our life, we have failures, we seek answers, and continually we retreat into our mind and try to figure out the answer to these problems, and we, we go to our own intellect. You know, if, if your thought process and if you're the means by which you make your decisions was somebody you hired on, let's say you hired your brain to make your decisions for you, You'd fire it. You know what? You're, it's doing a bad job. Where, where you're, wherever it's coming from, wherever your reasoning is coming from, as you continue to fail, if you had hired that thing on, you would have fired it. Same thing goes for money. You know, if you enlist money to solve your problems and it doesn't solve your problems, fire it. You know, if you enlist sexual relationships to fulfill your desires and it doesn't work, fire it. You know, step back and take a look at all of these things that you've tried. And if they don't work, Forget about them. If they don't work, stop, as, it, as they say, um, insanity is doing the same thing over again and expecting different results. And, um, you know, it's just so much easier to try things that we can see. It's so much easier to look to things that we can see. And that's why we do go back to our own mind over and over and over again for answers. And it's why we do go back to our mind over and over again to, for solutions to problems that we have on the inside. And it's why we do go to money, or to people, or to relationships, or to, I don't know, I guess, I guess drugs, stuff like that. Maybe alcohol to get your mind off of things. The thing is that none of those things can solve the problem. It's because none of, the, none of those things were at the base of the problem. Alcohol can't solve the problem because it's only symptomatic, you know, it's only treating symptoms. Money can't solve the problem because, again, it's not, it's not related to the center of the issue. The central issue is this daddy complex. The central issue is that we were created by God and for God. And until we realize that, until we live like that, we're always going to feel disconnected. Something's always going to feel not right. You know, it says in the scriptures, Paul said, that the things that he wanted to do, he didn't do. And the things that he didn't want to do, he did do. We're just all messed up, all over the place, you know, all around. Something's really off kilter about us. And um, God is the answer to everything that is off kilter about us and everything that is off kilter about anything. He is the answer because He's the one who knows. It's interesting the way people think that we created God, that uh, God was created out of, you know, somebody's, somebody's good idea. They say we know we created God because look at these attributes. They're so self serving to the human race. Of course, God would be like this. See, you can look at this time and culture. That's why they made God be like this, because it just lined up. 
Well, that's not really true. The, the personage of God doesn't line up into a, you know, always gentle or an always judgmental mindset. It doesn't really, he doesn't really fit into anybody's box. And humanity, if they were to make a God, is not always looking for someone to just always pat them on the back, and is not always looking for someone to condemn them. It's a weird thing, because we really think we're right. But at the same time, we really don't think we're right. We really, we really have a self-loathing that we go through. Maybe not everybody does, but I'm, I'm going to, to venture that you, the viewer who's, who's listening to me talk right now, have made a mistake at a point in your life. You think that you've made a mistake. Now, what does that mean? That means that you decided to do something, because I tell you, you've never done anything that you didn't decide to do at one point or another, somewhere along the line, that you had to make a decision that led to it, or, you know, more likely than not. You just made the decision flat out. So what does that mean? If you make a decision and you know it's wrong, or you look back on it later and say it was wrong, what does that mean? There's nothing self-serving about that at all. That's you choosing to do something and then something saying that that was wrong. Now what does that mean? Does that mean that you're inside your brain is built the capacity to question yourself? Or does that mean that there are some, there's a war going on inside of you between different natures? And are these natures in your brain? Or is it a supernatural thing? Is it, uh, is it ghosts? Is it spirits? I guess what I would say is, let's be intelligent. Let's not know what we know. Let's know what we don't know. What I mean by that is a lot of people take a lot of stock in their knowledge. But what I would say is that the true wise person is not the one who knows what he knows. It's the one who knows what he doesn't know. I think that's a biblical concept. And so what I would say to you is, God definitely exists. And I don't even really need to tell you that God definitely exists. If you came to this video, you, you probably just wanted your current view to be, you know, repeated anyway. But, uh, you know. You know that God exists. And, you know, you might fight it. And uh, you might allow your, you know, your intellect to get in the way and say, Whoa, 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 you can't believe in this. You can't prove this. You're better than that, you know. You're, you're better than those people who believe things that they can't prove. Well, you know what, you're, don't think like that. Don't allow your intellect or whomever else is speaking to you to let you be so arrogant to think that the only things that you should believe are things that you can understand and explain. Because let me tell you, there's a lot more truth out there than you could ever grasp your mind around. Like what I was talking about before with the substance and your origin. That doesn't make any sense at all. Basically, you are supernatural. You are a supernatural um, organism. Your existence and your substance doesn't make any logical or scientific sense. And uh, so let's be humble. Let's be humble and say what we don't know. Let's be through saying what we do know. Let's say what we don't know. And then let's be honest and start seeking. Does God exist? Yes, He does. And you already know that next time.